Uh, aloha. So thank you for being at the CGNF general meeting. Um, we're we're going to get started now, um, 6.30 already. So um, thank you for showing up. Uh, if you are not a member of CGNF Hawaii, you can join right now on this membership thing if you want to vote in our elections for our board, which is happening. So usually when we meet here, it's a club meeting, and we just kind of in, informal kind of follow educational stuff. This is our CGNF Hawaii board meeting, however. So... Um, our agenda is basically we're gonna today we're gonna eat during the time that we're eating we have a few nominations from the board for board members um, and we have three seats open this year for our board it's a two-year um, nom nomination process or a two-year term of service yeah co commitment um, and so we will we do have three seats open so um, during the time that we're eating, I believe we'll have time for the nominees that are here to express, um, you know, what they want because I believe we have more nominees than seats already. Um, we'll also um, take nominations from the general membership at that time if you have someone you wanted to nominate. Um, the requirements for being a board member are that you have taken a, a basic course um, from Master Cho or from a representative of um, the corporation, which is CGNF, um, so, so his instructors. Um, and, yeah, I believe those are, there's something else about one year. I should probably have this in my head, the bylaws. Yeah, and our, and our, our board positions are designed to be staggered. We have seven board members. This time there are three seats up for election and we're rectifying our staggered portion of that. Uh, otherwise our four bar board members are myself, Kim Chang, um, Mike Hubble, and Kim Martin are also our other current board members that will be on the board. Um, then the board after being elected will then decide our officers at our next board meeting. Um, so you're just electing someone to be on the board to help um, craft decisions and get consensus so for official corporation policy that we have. Um, it's fun, it's exciting. Um, it's gonna be even more fun and exciting. Just in Korea, and Master Cho is really talking about his vision for this organization. And it's really coming together an international level and many other countries getting into it. So, um, so our agenda tonight will be, you know, um, eating while it's, while we're eating, we'll have our nominees come up. Um, after we're done with elections, it'll be a secret ballot. Then we'll have a quick progress report of what the corporation has done this this year. Um, and then we will follow that with any remaining time to several of us just went to Korea um, to take a five day course. Yeah, thanks. That was fun. I got this shirt. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, that's a Cho shirt. And the scarf, you know, um, we'll be kind of going over that with the, with our remaining time. Um, so, any any questions on what the agenda is before? Um, and then, it, are um, how many people know they're not a member? Oh, wait. What's okay? Is it, is so, it? if you want to vote and you want to be part of it, um, there's uh, sign up there. If you're uncertain if you're a member, come talk to me as a secretary. I have to know whether you are or not, and I do. Um, so, I will check that and make sure it's all good. Um, and, and so, if you're a member, you vote? Yep. One vote per member. Um, for you, You're you going to write down your three people on a piece of paper and fold it up. And then it's secret ballot, so um, don't write your name on it. We don't want to know who you are. Um, so, any other questions on process flow today? Okay, so let's um, let's make a circle. We'll sing a whole my, and then we'll eat. <laughs>
Trump has some coke with you. No, I just got something slightly like wrong. Oh, okay, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good.
These are the. These are your. We're gonna pick three of these. Okay. So three seats open.
Aloha, and I'm good in front of a group, so this is a stretch. I'm Candy, um, for Kidland, and I am living and breathing in um, the garden. I'm trying to build pasture out of, you know, blue rock. <laughs> uh, we spray the land every 11 days with what I am all for. Um, I am passionate about free natural farming and particularly um, the inputs. I, there's something about that process that's very, very satisfying for me. Um, I really enjoy producing healthy food for people and you know, sharing that with my neighbors and my friends and uh, people at meetings and that kind of thing. Um, I would enjoy serving community uh, island or in whatever capacity um, is needed right now. Um, one thing for sure about me is I have a lot of passion and I show up. Thank you. Awesome. Good evening, everyone. My name is Michael. I'm also in Orchid Land and retired, farming full time, raising rabbits, taking care of rabbits. So, if anybody would like to have some rabbits, we have some available. <laughs> Right now, IMO4 is being made in the greenhouse. It came in the model from IMO3 a couple of days ago. And I don't know how much it we're gonna go and take and then make it into IMO5, because we have the OHN input instead of that that we're gonna be part of it. Growing our own food, trying to feed ourselves, that was basically what trying to decide and how to do it and what to grow. I have a professional background and I'm running for the board because I think the board could utilize my experience <coughs> and the direction that we're going. And as the previous uh, candidate, I also help. And, uh, I'm not afraid to help. And so hopefully we can find a good direction to take this to the next level as to where CGNFY needs to go. Thank you for your attention and hopefully give me your vote. <laughs> years now, eight years, I've watched uh, the birthing of natural farming in Hawaii. And I've always supported Drake. I've always been um, a cheerleader for him. I so much believe in what he's doing and what, what's happening. And um, Drake and I had a conversation that I would like to be involved <clears throat> and uh, have a relationship with him in the, in the not a mom-son relationship as much as a board-to-board -board relationship in making this, um, continuing what has been started, um, growing it more and more. My background is, <clears throat> some of you know I'm a yoga teacher, but my, um, my real strength is that I'm an event planner. And uh, I think that the way to uh, really, where I can bring some strength to the board is to um, help and really organize and direct uh, as an event planner. For example, the International Symposium that may or may not happen in Hawaii, but if we have enough help with all of it, I know we could do it and do it really, really well. So I look forward to doing that. Um, as well as um, having other events where we can spread our message that much more to people that are seeking them. Mm, I love natural farming. <laughs> I love it. It's uh, 
everybody should know. Everybody should have this opportunity. So that's my goal too, is to just really spread the word, get it out there, and um, help everybody can. Thank you. So I'm going to speak on Jason's behalf. Uh, his house burned down today. I don't know if it fully burned down, but, oh, no. but it lit on fire. I don't know if it fully burned down, so don't be like, oh no, yeah, I feel like his house caught on fire. So, um, um, but Jason has been an advocate of natural farming. He he has he's one of our first level two certified people. He took. The handouts that I gave him and, and laminated them mm -hmm. into handouts for his That's students. That's the best. It's right. so good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's been working really hard. He's, he's been showing up to our board meetings, um, even though he's not a board member. So he's been already getting in tune with what we're doing. Um, and, uh, I know for years he volunteered at the Hilo Farmers Market to be um, just give away seeds to people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So his, his passion for regenerative agriculture, getting people into ag is huge. And he moved to the Big Island to, to really learn permaculture. But when he found natural farming, he was like, oh, this is even better. This is this is what I want to learn and teach to everybody. And um, and so I just, I, I really resonated with him over the years. And um, and our board decided to nominate him as one of our candidates. So unfortunately, he couldn't be here today. But you know, dire circumstances were the only case where he wasn't here. So. His house is burning down. Yeah, right? I mean, shoot. Um, I, yeah, I wouldn't be here either. So. Okay, so thanks for Jason. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. You, know, you can always decline too. Yeah. Okay. So. Test on the paper. So yeah, um, if you know you're a valid member, take a piece of paper. Otherwise, I should probably check that you're a member before you get one here. Oh yeah, are um, you a member? Yes. Are you a member? Yes. Yeah, Nami's one for sure. Are you a member? Yeah. Yeah. $30 a year. Oh, it, from date of starting to, like, so if you pay us today, you'll be valid until December 12th, 2018. Yeah, so you're good. What's your last name? Kimball. Kimball. Yeah, you're, you're in here. You're good. You're a member, you're a member until June 30th, 2018. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. Thank you. 
piece of cake. I never know to make warm water. I was always doing it in colder water. I just wanted to share that with you. So the next time you go to make WCA, use warm water to so pull the membranes out and use Okay. It's a dead Yeah, that's Um so David, do you wanna come give some thoughts on career? Yeah. Yeah. Come on over. Master Cho, and he shared a vision that he had of creating a animation movie and story to bring some of these ideas and concepts to life. And I would love to be a part of that with all of you because it's going to take a collaboration to bring all the ideas and insights together to paint a picture that the whole world can understand and it doesn't matter what language you speak um, through storytelling we can create something that will resonate with the world and um, yeah <laughs> um, also being able to uh, take an IMO bath felt like felt like um, really connecting to the, the creator and how we come from the soil and being able to pause for a second and meditate and breathe and reflect on how important it is for us to share this information with the world. Um, I feel so blessed to be able to have gone and traveled and had these experiences and <laughs> Korean natural, like, you truly are like family, and I have so much love for this, and I'm honored to be here with you all and help be the change that we wish to see in the world. Last class was uh, very special. It was the uh, first time I experienced with uh, people coming from uh, different country, like uh, Taiwan, um, China, Japan, Canada, and uh, of course uh, from Hawaii. I mean, but we are all like-minded people, and then really their their love for the uh, natural farming is beyond just natural farming because they understand 
what is natural farming is. It's not only <laughs> food and soil, actually a whole ecosystem. Mm -hmm. They totally understand. And they have so much love in their heart. I mean, it was awesome. I mean, and if you look at the Facebook, there's a, all over the globe now. Mm -hmm. Even Europe is just, uh, they want to spread this thing, you know? So actually, you know, realistically, we do have a problem in, in our earth. Too much chemical. Only way we can save is uh, natural farming. There's lots of people say it's already too late. But then you never know. It spread like a virus, just like Ray said. There's a virus, he said. <laughs> you, you cannot control this virus. You cannot kill it. That's what he said. We are like a natural farming virus going, you know, everywhere to hold all over the world. I mean, it's for helping our human being. Actually, um, we are killing ourselves with this chemical. They don't know. That chemical company doesn't understand. Scientists does understand what they're doing. Actually, they're demising human race. So, Master Joe, he's 86 years old, right? 84, I'm sorry. But they, we were really worried last October. He, he did a, um, he came over here, did a seminar, but right before, maybe three, four days before, he was in um, Taiwan or something. He didn't have enough rest, and then he was his uh, health was just like going downhill. I mean, we ever never saw him that way. So we were really really worried. But they he come back. He came back. He did it all self again at our seminar. We were doing 8:30 start 8:30 until midnight every day. Every day. Yeah, it was it was. I don't know where he get that energy, but then. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you do natural farming, your passion gives you extra, you know, unexplainable power. Yeah. So I hope uh, you learn it and uh, practice it so you can be healthier. And while just you guys doing that, naturally, it's get healthy everywhere, environmentally. So hopefully we keep going on. Don't give up, okay? If anybody say any negative, don't listen. You are doing the right thing. I promise you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? No, that's not true. Okay, so so my my overview on it. Um, we, we got into Seoul in the evening, we got on a bus in the middle of the night, drove down to Gongsong, um, and then woke up in uh, Mr. Lee's training center, where last time I was there, or when I was there in April, it was just a greenhouse. When I was there in September, it was a complete learning center, just like this quality built inside this greenhouse. This time, there was bunk beds. So we didn't have to sleep on the floor. <laughs> um, so, so every time I go, he's improving and he's building more. Um, and this time also when we were there, the farm, he had built uh, two additional greenhouses in the back. So the first day we were there, we got to go to the learning center, which I've been many times. Um, and so you can watch my YouTube videos on the, you know, Gokusan Learning Center or Natural Farming Learning Center and see that. But each time I go to that learning center, I learn more. Uh, and it's amazing. It's just like these simple, basic things. But I felt like this time he really talked more about the water-soluble um, potassium and the water-soluble phosphorus. And I, you know, I never really learned too much about those because those aren't really in our core recipes that we've been talking about um, because they're they're it's like the icing on the cake. You know, we got you got to make a cake before you put the icing on top. But it was interesting for me to like review and get this this icing part and really learn more about that. You know, the, the method they use for preparation is just soaking them in water for a few days. No vinegar needed for both the water soluble phosphorus or the water soluble potassium. And so I'll, I'll be posting the videos you can go through and see. You know, watch it for yourself firsthand. Um, but I but I you know I was like every time you go to this learning center, it's, you know, same thing. But 
The interesting thing about the Learning Center is Mr. Cho, so not Master Cho, like Cho's a common name in Korea, but this guy, Mr. Cho, who's been there forever, he was there in 2009 with a stick pointing at stuff, and he has finally retired. And he passed it on to this dude that looks like he's 30, so he must be like 50 or 60. <laughs> no. He passed it on to this young guy. So who's running the most advanced learning center in the world? This young guy and this young movement coming up, and he knows his stuff. He was telling us all about it, and you know the same lady that invented the IMO machine was there, and so he still has his support staff, but. Literally, that you know, it's been passed. The baton's been passed to this new young guy. So we got to check that out. It was really cool. It was a whirlwind tour through there, though. We were there for maybe a half hour, forty-five minutes. Like it was quick. But I documented it really well. I'm really excited to get something like that built in Hilo. I, I think you know, the, the consensus of all the natural farmers has been, you know, we need one of these. It would really help because we run this meeting, but really help. Like, imagine you came in this room and there was posters and all this mm -hmm. stuff and like demonstrations and examples. A room this size could could transform and give us an anchor point. So, I'm really focused on that this year. Um, after that, we got to go to the tool store, and so I bought a whole bunch of tools. Got out of there with like a whole thing of tools, sixty-five bucks. Yeah. Um, I should have bought more, but I didn't. You know, it was oh man, it was. Like, I didn't want to make everyone wait while I'm like browsing through the hose and stuff, you know. Love looking at hoes. <laughs> uh, and then, then we went to this seed shop and it was it was really interesting to see because it's it's the middle of winter and I felt like we we're the only customers these dudes had all day. Everyone's like sitting by the, the heater, like eating their homemade kimchi and cracking chestnuts and like we walk in, they're like, oh, and they, were, they were so stoked, they gave us a whole case of persimmons. We got to eat those. Um, and I'm glad we kind of had that, that down day. Um, and at the end of the day, Mr. Lee showed us his greenhouse. It's, a, it's basically 100 meters long by like 12 meters wide or something. And he built this entire thing for 20 grand. But the, the Goksong County reimburses him. He only has to pay like 40% of the fee. So it only costs him like $7,000 to build this amazing greenhouse. And what he's going to do with this greenhouse is plant fruit trees in it. So that when we go, he can show us the fruit trees. And it'll be trellised and it'll have you know everything kept small inside that greenhouse. So you can grow year round. Um, and then we got to go see the chickens and pigs that he has there in his feed system again, which I've gone into detail and actually spent like seven whole days in both those places. So, um, but there's always more to learn every single time, learn more. He was basically separating his females and male pigs differently than I thought he would. And for some reason, the female pig's pen was wetter and the female pen pigs liked the wet pen. So I, someone was asking him, why is this one wet? He's like, oh, it's the females. And all the male's pigs were dry. The floor was dry, but the females were wet. So it's interesting to see. Um, and his feed system's working out really well. He built a new chicken processing room so he doesn't have to do it in the floor in the gross quail breeding room. Because I was kind of a little sketchy, but I'm still here. Um, and uh, so, so then the next day, class started, and, um, and then I got... So we wake up in the morning, and I woke up early. I woke up about uh, 5 in the morning because of time change, and, and Joe McGinn was just snoring so loud. <laughs> and I'm just like, am I going to try to go back to sleep with a snoring car? I'm just going to go outside. Even though it's early, I probably should have slept a little bit more. But went out, and Master Cho just gave his, he, as you're sitting there just before class, he gave, he gave this amazing lecture. I learned so much in that small 15 minutes. Because when someone has a question for him and has this desire to learn, his delivery is just on point. And he can just tell you all this wisdom. When he's giving general lecture, it's like, you know, he's kind of going through the basics to make sure he has his stuff, but he doesn't necessarily touch on everything, you know. He'll go deep into things, but it's not the same as like this beginning session. So had about an hour session with him, got a great picture of him and Ray reuniting which is awesome because Ray was with him in the early years and then had all kinds of stuff come up and split off to work with his son. But now he's coming back to Master Cho. 
And he's learned so much in the meantime that now when he listens to Master Cho, so much deeper to him. It has so much more meaning and he sees the value of what Master Cho is, you know, teaching. It's not like, oh, it's an old man that doesn't want to, you know, like, you know, has too many secrets. Like, Jidam's easy, right? It's simple and you can learn it in one lecture. Master Cho, you have to go lecture after lecture after lecture. But it's because each time you're getting a new layer, a deeper layer, and you as a farmer are evolving in your practice. And the same thing said to you different time may open up a whole new avenue for you. So it's not always, it's not the same stuff. It's like, it's, it's, it's more when you seek it. Mm -hmm. um, so I took notes on that. And then I got, I got dehydrated on the airplane. Plus I was super excited to be there and I got sick. So by the time Master Cho's lecture really started that morning, I was like my head on the table, like almost dying. And so for the first up until lunchtime, I was just dying. And I couldn't even take notes. I was just, I had my video set that up, made sure it was recording. I'm like, I'll watch it later and just like, try not to die right in the front row. Um, but people notice because everyone's there is an open heart and they notice, they're like, oh, Drake, you're not looking so hot. And I vomited a couple times and I was going to back to vomit and then I was with four doctors, the five, six doctors just randomly appeared, which is cool, but each of them wanted to work their magic on me. <laughs> so I ended up getting beat until tears, and then this other dude grinded at my shoulders and my things, and he's like, oh no, you're dead, you're gonna have to go to the hospital. I'm like, no, no, I'm not dead, I swear, no, I'm still alive. Um, but they brought me back to life, and I think Jenny Choi's, um, like, pseudo Heimlich maneuver she did on me, plus touching the back of my spine, like, it's like, and she did this Heimlich thing, and then I could take liquids again, because all the liquids I was just vomiting back up. And so then I just, that first day I just laid on the floor in the back with a hot stone on my belly, and by the time the evening I felt probably like 80%, whereas before I was like 20%, like almost dead, you know. Came back to 80%, and then, um, then for dinner they asked me, do you want fermented milk? And I was like, sure, I'll roll with it. And Chris looks at me like, fermented milk? I was like, yeah. Comes out with yogurt. It's like, <laughs> fermented milk was a good choice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's what you were drinking. Yeah, yeah. They, they made a, Mrs. Lee made a special tea yeah. for me. Had IMO4, LAB, and then four other herbs in it. Yeah. And I drank that, and that really helped me get, you know, like once I could take liquids, then that really helped solidify me. So I was joking, I was drinking the pig's water. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 kind of a, it's, it's an interesting journey for me there. It's on many levels, like, and you know, it's kind of death, rebirth, kind of thing. But anyway, um, um, so then the second day I was I was back and I was back alive and taking notes and filled up like about twenty five pages of notes just sitting there and um, recording and and you know he went deep into nutrient cycle and how you like can hit it or miss it and the whole prescription treatments really really a whole bunch of stuff where I know it but then when he says it again it's like there's more to know about it and it's and it's so cool to see it unfold in that way of you know and, and each crop is different like for some reason they asked him to talk about tomatoes I was like ah, not tomatoes but <laughs> that was my own bias but but he talked about tomatoes for like three hours on like exactly how to grow tomatoes. And the amount of detail he had, it was, was incredible, but like the thing about it is he understands the plant fundamentally. Mm -hmm. So his, when we asked him about tomatoes, his first question to us is, where is tomatoes home? Right? And so like all of us are like, We're, you know, it's the Andes Mountains, because you know, I, I know this, but, but so you've got to understand the environment the tomato came from. So a common problem is people overwater them and give them too much of this and that. And, and how they plant them doesn't enable it to kind of lay on the ground and like get, you know, in the, the hairs on the tomato are actually indicators of its health. And, and all this like subtle detail into the tomato plant specifically that you could ask them about any crop and you would have had all this deep, deep, deep wisdom to go into on different things. But the general formula 
you know, pretty much the same. Uh, the interesting thing about the tomato is it goes through um, morning sickness cross changeover period, um, like every two weeks, every 14 days, it's gonna go through this. So you're always giving the changeover period treatment to it. Whereas most other crops, you know, if it's an annual crop, you're giving it once and then it's going. And so, so it's interesting to know, like, in, in that transition helps it ease while it's throwing out flowers and fruiting and doing all these things. And he'll talk about many crops, like beans have three times, have morning sickness three times in its life cycle. So you gotta identify when is that life cycle. And what he, what he said on the paper is it's this, it's this yellow, yellow time yellowing period of time. So when you see your plant in like your bean and it starts to get a little yellow, yeah, that's its morning sickness. It's going through that changeover period. So the more so you... What, what was that, how is that yellow? The plant yellow. It's okay. called yellow that's period right. time. The whole plant. Yeah. Okay. And so it looks a little weak during that time, but it's a little weak because it's, it's in that very vulnerable going from growing to reproducing. It's in that vulnerable time. And so that's what he's looking for when he's saying morning sickness and all these things. When you really tune into your plant, you'll recognize that. And you would take his philosophy and apply it to your plant. Because each, you know, things will be different in terms of how many morning sicknesses they have, how many times they're going through this period. I bet even a tomato, watch it every 14 days, it'll look a little bit more yellow. Probably if you're, if you're doing it. I, I would just imagine. I, I haven't personally witnessed that. But. And anytime, anytime he would ask us, like Joe was asking him about, uh, or he, example is Chris, he's like, when does your MacNet do this? And Chris is like, I don't pay attention to my plant that much. He came and just, bam! <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, he really wants us to tune in. You know, it's more than just applying these formulas and these general things. It's like, how tuned in are you, are you to your plant? Do you know when it's, go, you know, how many morning sicknesses does an apple have? You know, not like there's apples here, but um, does a papaya have? You know, have we observed it close enough to understand this concept? And, and so he, he goes, again, a lot between, you know, anytime we get puzzled about plants, he goes back and he starts talking about human. You know, puberty, these different things that we experience that we're familiar with because we've all been through it. Um, and he'll bridge these analogs and his main message is that they're no different. You just got to understand the, the idiosyncrasies between them. Um, and then he was, he was talking about offering a um, course where couples come. So you want to build babies that are like 10 feet tall and have, he would show how to um, raise children and go through the, um, these cycles with, with humans in mind. Um, so he, he may do that. We need 20 couples to be present there. And he, he would offer it in Hawaii. Um, so. Child, child very near Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Yeah. So, and, and even Kupuna could attend just to like pass this knowledge on and this wisdom <laughs> to share. But he would always go through those things. Um, and you know, I I didn't I didn't go back over my notes, but it was just oh, it was it was it was grueling to go from eight in the morning till like midnight. <laughs> And like, Oma comes in the room, she's like, ah, let's go to sleep. And he's like, no. <laughs> um, and so we, so we charge on. And, um, and also, um, Mr. Lee talks to us a lot about making IMO5. And there, what, I, what I've found is there's a lot of, we need to, we need to um, fix our vocabulary. Because four different things were called IMO5, which are completely distinct processes. The concept of making IMO5, basically taking microbes and then mixing them with other material. So in, in one case it was taking 10% um, IMO4, mixing with bone char, and adding a little vinegar into it. And that's to apply right before fruiting stage. That, that then you're like, a week before fruiting stage, then your tree will, will grow really nice. He just called that IMO5. So if you just write in your notes, apply IMO5 before this, you're not going to apply the correct IMO5. And so I believe we as English speaking practitioners need to come up with a little bit better vocabulary to explain these recipes. 
because you'll start to see on it what is IMO5, and he said it was this, you know, like, you know, but it's really like, you know, fermenting manure is a different one. It's also an IMO5, but I call that one bio. I, I don't know, we'll, we'll have to come up with some name. And then, and then he has the compost where 10% of it up to, well, actually up to 40% of it can be IMO4, and then you're mixing up uh, carbon and nitrogen-based compost. And that one's called FMC. Just fermented mixed compost, but but it's called IMO five in the general description. So it's so we have to get these things a little bit more clear. But we had basically a whole midday lecture on how to prepare IMO five and how to really make this happen. And I, I realized it's one of the flaws in my farming is I'm not I'm definitely not putting out enough IMO five. Kind of just putting out mulch and IMO four and then foliar feeding. But if I also put this solid IMO5 FMC in my garden, I will, I will crank. As my plants get a little hungry, and it's not like, it's like the consistent food, and then my sprays will be still food, and still like possible to do spraying, but it'll, it'll that whole package I think will really increase my things. And so when I say my farming's not that good, I mean, that I farm all right. I mean, if I, well, it's so lazy and stuff, but. Um, <laughs> but he gave me this poster, unfortunately, TSA bent it in half. Um, feel safe for no offense. <laughs> 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 but this corn plant, he gave this to us to put in our new learning center, which now means we gotta make a learning center. Um, this corn plant has 13 yes. corns on it. Thirteen to fifteen corns on. I don't. I don't know. I. You know. I. I actually have uh, the report of the lady who gave it at the symposium last year, and she's a farmer, but she's right up against the North Korean border, and she has a, a test farm with Kung Cook University, and she really tuned into the nutrient cycle, knowing exactly when to apply something, and the corn plant had no stress. And so it performed to its, you know, its peak performance. Yeah, like corn should be doing this if we tune in. And so, um, so when I say I'm not fully getting this, it's because this one had, you know, the, the bone char thing put into it and had these other very subtle pieces put in. And really, like, instead of asking about tomato, they probably asked about corn. And he went into like a two hour, three hour thing on corn specifically. <laughs> Right, and then you can do this. So, um, so yeah. So it's it's just all kinds of things like that um, going. It, it was also nice to have the team from Taiwan. There. Um, I was able to give the hard drive that has all the recordings to the Taiwan team. So they have from basically 2009 up till you know that seminar on video to share with their whole team. The guys from China were there, two, two of them. She was the one who slapped me, and uh, I'll get her back. <laughs> um, and just that, that after, you know, lecturing till midnight, and then the Mongoli comes out, and then people start singing songs till about four in the morning. And uh, had about three nights like that. And, and then when we got back to Seoul, we, I got to spend three days in Seoul. And then, David and Joe did the same thing for the guys in the hostel. These guys that are in the city that just they hear about this farming that you know, every I think every young person has this need to like help the world when you really realize it. And they ended up talking to them till four in the morning, turning them on to Korean natural farming. We got to meet one of David's friends um, that he met here in Hawaii, and she came and she took us to dinner, and then we told her about what was happening and you know the whole global banking and how you know um that's that's my take on it um but then she is probably going to attend master cho's korean only lecture in the spring mm -hmm. and so pe people from all over you just give them a glimpse of natural farming and they're they're getting turned on and, um also on the way back up um i got to stop in Tejon, which is where um cho young songs mm -hmm. Um, 
brainstorming and, and demonstration farm is. And bro, that guy can host. <laughs> like he set the new bar. Like when they, I, I, like then I felt terrible when they came here and we, you know, we went to like the the you know like man they they threw down. Like he was he was slicing like sashimi for everyone, pouring drinks. I didn't. I just drank water and he was like. It's kind of giving me stink eye for just drinking water. That's what my body needed. Um, Dr. Park, oh, that man can sing. <laughs> he started singing these old folk tunes and then David Wong handed him a spoon. And he pretended like it was a microphone and he just was singing his heart out. Oh. Yeah, yeah, Dr. Park has Lots of tea. <laughs> and in the Dijon Learning Center is probably a room about half, like the, the main room was about this size room with a big square thing and then it's cooking in the middle. And so as he's, he's cooking food for us and he put it on these sashimi platters and then it was three course meal, um, some sort of fish, a yellowfin tuna fish and then steak and then sweet potatoes and peppers and he's like, don't eat the peppers, they're just for show. <laughs> Uh, but all, almost all the stuff was grown on his farm. You know, the, the meat obviously wasn't, but but all the, the side dishes and everything was um, super ono. And but in his learning center, around the outside, were all of his inputs. So I had this herbal solution, that herbal solution. He had a bottle of potassium hydroxide, a thing of wedding oil, a thing of oil. You know, and so you're surrounded by this, like their solutions. And then we got to go. I, I deposited some nutrients in his um, his composting toilet. <laughs> I brought him up from Guksong. He was very happy. <laughs> um, and then then we got to go sleep in a spa. There wasn't enough room. There was only four beds there, so the ladies slept there. Um, and then we went to the spa with Ray, and he fell asleep on the floor. And uh, it's just a funny story with that. Um, but this, if you haven't experienced the Korean spa, it's worth going just to Korea just for that. Um, you'll be like, oh man, it's really disappointed me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I slept on the floor there. And um, what other highlights? This, like, it, it was an amazing trip. The food itself was worth it. Um, one, one interesting side story. So David sat next to this guy on the plane. And we flew over to Korea. We get to Korea, we go down to Gokson, we come back to Seoul. We're walking out of our hostel in, in Itaewon district, and we're walking down the street, and this guy busts out of this restaurant. He says, hey, I, I know you. And I'm, looking, I'm like, like, the police are coming at me. I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, no. I, I was a little paranoid because they said they're, they're against knives there, and I was, I was afraid they were going to take my knife because I brought it. It's a farming tool. And it, I wasn't, you know, I was safe. I only knife three people. Um, <laughs> to open things for them. Um, but he, out of nowhere, pops in and says, oh, I was, I was sat next to you on the airplane. Okay, there's 26 million people in Seoul. He didn't tell them we're going to eat Taiwan. He was sitting in the restaurant. He happened to look up out of the restaurant and pop up and like come out and say, hey, David. <laughs> and so he took a selfie with him. Later that night, we're in um, in Sildong, um, like street thing, and Leslie, one of our friends, went to visit another friend, and then we're walking out of this shop, and Leslie walks out of the shop. So again, like 26 million people, she could have been anywhere in the city, and she walks out, and we meet up with her, like right there. <laughs> And so, like the synchronicity and the and the thing was just unheard of. I mean, it's just it's amazing. Yeah, how widespread is the dance in, in Korea? I uh, you know they I mean they teach a whole lot of people, and I know I know even even on the internet, Jadam is a bit more famous, mm -hmm. just because it's more approachable, mm -hmm. right? So you just you just rot some stuff in a bucket, and you're good to go. So. So I know it has a little broader appeal, um, and I know the pesticide part really appeals to people. Um, but the true numbers, they, they have something like, like 8,000 sponsors or something. That's, that's people that go and, and pay a certain amount a month to be, 
to further them in their work. Um, and the Gok Song Learning Center, the, the Master Cho, but they also they also employ Jadam principles. So they'll teach you about the Jadam sulfur and the herbs and the wetting agent at that space, as well as Master Cho's principles for microbes and nutrition. So they kind of merge both there. And they service 300 farmers. So in each farmer, so it's a, each farmer is about an acre, so they service about 300 acres worth of people doing it. Um, yeah, also the Jungsang, where they make dinner, that, that was actually um, storage yeah, before. And then they convert, converted the half of space as a living space. It's a one acre lot, and they farm there. And they grow about 60 different um, crops. And then they're farm that they, um, right now it's the winter, nothing is on, but they, they may so beautiful, prepare to uh, plant stuff spring. It's amazing. I, I don't know if you have a Facebook, you should look, and it is on, we post it on the Facebook. I might, I might send out part of the newsletter, which I haven't been on lately, but I'll get on the newsletter to send out just reviews, because we had a bunch of, seminars and things and I, I now actually have consistent internet access so I'll be putting that out to like share more um, pictures and just media of what we saw because the experience was just incredible and so the more people that know it exists it's, it's good so any, any other questions I was just curious whether um, Jadam or natural farming has any solutions to horrible, horrible invasive vines. Is there anything natural to get rid of other than climbing the trees and getting poppers off the trees and stuff like that? Is there anything? Uh, the, main, the main idea is if you have good soil foundation, parasitic anti-plant plants won't grow. They're usually there to fix some sort of thing that's unbalanced in the environment, mm -hmm. but that that may not be an immediate solution to what you have. Right, because this is a, on the road and up a half mile driveway. It's not on my place, but it will get there. Uh, well, if you make your spot all sweet soil foundation, it won't it won't sprout there. It will be like oh, you're okay. cool, and it won't want to. Um, okay. I'm a big fan of a flame weeder, um, also concentrated agricultural vinegar. Okay. Um, yeah. Or, you know, employ you your local plants. community. Can you inject plants with a syringe? Mm -hmm. With vinegar? With the high, you know, the farm vinegars? Yeah. I haven't done that. Well, I mean, that would be like, bam! <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, that sounds I mean, better than injecting it with the herbicide. So. Right, because <laughs> when you cut them at the bottom, I, I like taking a long saw and cut and slice them down, you know, so they're open, especially now when it's really dry. But the ones way up there are still like, uh, and, and I thought if, you know, if I put some vinegar metallic <laughs> acid in there, no, not a mouse, yeah, in their, in their arteries, you know, maybe it would help the top. Give it a try. Okay. Yeah. So, no, no, uh, other than making the land happen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, any, any other questions? So I got this sweet shirt there. Anyone want to guess the price? <laughs> Three bucks. Eight. Eight, 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 eight. I don't know, let me have a feel it. I'm going to see that part. Is it flammable? Wool? What do you guess? It's rice. Why do you bought that shirt? That's the key. So I bought it in the subway. No, but why? Why you bought that shirt? Because you're freezing cold. Because Master Joel wears something like that all the time. I saw that. I knew Master Joe shirt. Yeah, so the, the temperature the entire time was like, it was 20 Celsius, or 20 Fahrenheit, zero cel like negative six Celsius. Plus then wind factor was, oh, that snowed a couple times over there. And then um, we, um, yeah, ended up buying gloves and all kinds of stuff, but it was, it was frigid. 
Yeah, like, like negative, negative 6 Celsius. What? Negative 6 Celsius, which is about 20 Fahrenheit. Yeah, it's cold. Can we give you one hand? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 About eighteen dollars. <laughs> Anyone want to guess how much this scarf was? <laughs> was, was, was a long 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 against the five made in Korea. <laughs> five dollars. Two hundred eight dollars. Twelve. We almost got over there. <laughs> five thousand won. Yeah. Five thousand won. <laughs> So it's just like four or fifty or something, yeah. four eighty somewhere. That's amazing. Is that what kind of stuff Lasset Joe wears? No, no, he's he's hardcore. I'm not used to the weather. Oh yeah. And then we went to Benson, we went to a tool store. The 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 lady that we can pick the fruit from the tree oh. the, without the uh, stick. Mm -hmm. That part for four dollars off the basket. Yeah. 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 Yeah
reading these books and bringing this kind of leadership in and now with our new board here um, let's have Candy, Jennifer and Jason in situ come up here and let's have the rest of the board come up too I know Jack just left but and too bad Jackie left we should thank her for her service because she's been president for like how many years So we need, we do, with this board, we're gonna, you know, it's more than just us, we need we need more help, you know, and, and to delegate, but to have some leadership to, to share with you guys, because we don't want to burn out, and, you know, if we burn out, then it, it all collapses, so, but we have some things we want to do this year that, that could really move natural farming forward, and so I just, if you guys could thank everyone up here, you know, our new and existing board members that, you know, that's amazing. you is not uh, ready yet, but we're trying to get a booth for natural farming. So Cision of Hawaii will pay for the booth, but I know uh, this, all these little um, natural farming farmer can bring their product and sell. So only that way we can really uh, move forward. You, we need to show people here's the natural farming food here. Yeah. So, Oh, we're or not, no we'll worry about later. that. That's a later, but we are, uh, yeah, doing brainstorm right now. So it will be on the way next year, for sure. You educate there too. Oh yeah, exactly, education and all that, all combined. So we're gonna have a site for that. So help everyone. Yeah, we, got, we want your honey. <laughs> Just honey. <laughs> cool. So, so thanks. You, thanks you, guys. you guys are the quorum of CJ and the boys, so thanks for representing. Thank you.